Sunday school material, we still are in volume one of that in our, uh, in our, in our, in our study. We're in series two of God is our refuge. Today is July the 31st, year 2020, 22. And today's lesson is entitled, Our, our God, Our Burden Bearer. And the lesson's big idea is, I will cast my cares upon the Lord. And that, and our focus verse comes from the book of Psalms, the uh, 55th chapter and the 22nd verse. It is cast out, and it reads, cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. And our lesson text comes from the book of uh, 2 Samuel, the 17th chapter, the 15th to the 22nd verse. Also, Psalms, the 55th chapter, the 22nd to the, to the 23rd verse, and 1 Peter, uh, our last scripture will be 1 Peter, the 5th chapter, the 7th verse. As it is our custom that we all stand for our response to read. I'll read the first verse, and you read the second verse, and we'll read the last verse in concert. Amen? It says, Then said Hushai unto Zoko and to Abinathar, Abadar, how you say that? Abadar, the priest. Thus and thus did Abimtel's council at Absalom and the elders of Israel. And thus and thus have I counsel. Now therefore send quickly and tell David, saying, Lodge not this night in the plains of the wilderness, but speedily pass over, lest the king be swallowed up and all the people that are with him. Now Jonathan and Abernathar said unto, what's that? In Rogar, for, the, for thy might not be seen to come and come into the city. And a wretch went out and told him, and they went and told King David. Nevertheless, the lad saw them and told Absalom, but they went both of them quick, way quickly, and came to a man's house in Bahrain, which had a well in the court, whither they went down. And the woman took and spread it and cover over the well's mouth. And spread it and spread it ground ground corn thereon, and the thing was not known. And when Absalom's servants came to the woman to the house, they said, Where is Ahimaaz and Jonathan? And the woman said unto them, They be gone over the brook of water. And when they had sought and could not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. And it came to pass after they were departed that they came up out of the well and went and told King David and said unto David, Arise and pass quickly over the water, for thus has a Ahithophel counseled against you. Then David arose and all the people that were with him and passed over Jordan. By the morning light, there was not one of them that was not gone over Jordan. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. But thou, O God, shalt bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out after thee. But I will trust in thee. All together. Cast thy burden upon him, for he cares for you. For he cares for you. Amen. You may be seated. Our lesson connection reads in its entirety, one minister, to, uh, one, one minister tell of his experience as he and his wife endeavored to reopen and establish a church that had been closed for a year. They went, they, they, they went here, yeah, they went to a university, ta university town and the church property was, in, property was in shambles, so much that the power company refused to turn on the electricity except for a single utility pole so he could the building. The only job he could find, find, paid the typical college town minimum wage. He and his wife, and wife added their meager income in one column and their minimal expenses in another. But
but the expenses outweigh the income. Still, they never miss payment, paying a bill or rent without necessities. One Friday night, they uh, did not have the money to fuel their vehicle to go uh, to a sectional route. So they just went and went window shopping at the local mall, only looking because they had no money to buy. While at the mall, the minister stuck, uh, stuck his hand into the pocket of his suit coat and, and discovered a $20 bill. Having no idea who had placed it there, they decided to gas up the car and travel to the sectional rally for inspirational and inspiration and encouragement. While they traveled, the minister shook, uh, while, while there, the, the minister shook the hand of another pastor who left a $50 bill in his hand. God was demonstrating his desire and ability, his desire and his ability to care for the young couple. Recently, the same minister was suffering, was suffering through one health crisis after another. In the midst of this roller coaster year, his parents had to be placed into a nursing home. And there his father fell and broke his hip early in the year. The minister traveled to the town where his father was, go, uh, was going to rehab and drove his father back to the nursing home. Only a month later, the minister himself was suffering se se severe seasonal allergies during the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. He was finally able to get a, a measure of medical assistance but the condition did not completely disappear. Ultimately, he, ultimately he was diagnosed with severe asthma and giving uh, medication to mitigate the condition. Shortly thereafter, he contract, contracted the COVID-19 virus. A month later, he suffered a second detached retina, having suffered, the, suffered his first detached retina only two years previous. The man cried out to and out and complained to God in the midst of his seemingly unending suffering. He uh, recounted all, all he was doing for God's kingdom, but God seemingly neither impressed nor moved. The Lord simply reminded him gently of the many times he had provided over the year, years past. A shame of himself for doubting the Lord and for his uh, complaining, for his complaining attitude, the man realized afresh that the key but the, the key to dealing with present adversity exists in looking to the Lord's, uh, Lord's ever-present uh, ever present care in the past, trials, and through ministry, ministering one's absolute faith in Jesus Christ for the present. Jesus really does care for his people, and he alone is the, is, he alone is the uh, reliable burden, burden of our burdens. Minister Alex. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Let's pray one more time. Ask the Lord to help us. Father, we give you praise. We thank you for a good day. Thank you for your kindness, for your mercy, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your strength. We can't, can't make it without you. We depend upon you, Lord God. Today we pray that you would have your way in every heart throughout this day. That lives will truly be changed in the power of the name of Jesus Christ, O God. Lord, we love you and we give you praise for this. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The truth about God, I mean, if you know this, that God will bear the burdens we surrender to him. Amen. That is the truth about the Lord. The scripture, the scripture reveals unto us that God will bear our, will be our burden bearer. Uh, Isaiah 53, verse number four says, surely, surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Amen. 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 Uh, of course, there's more to the verse of Scripture. Amen. But the word there, born, means to take away, to 
For surely the Lord has taken away our griefs and have carried our sorrows. Isaiah 10 and 27 said, And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Isaiah 22 and 25 says, In that day, said the Lord of hosts, shall the nail that is fastened in the sure place be removed and be cut down and fall. And the burden that was upon it shall be cut off. For the Lord has spoken. 1 Corinthians. Is it all right to read scripture today? Okay. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Somebody say God is faithful. God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. The word temptation can simply be replaced with trial. Yeah. Sometimes trials can be very, very burdensome. Amen? Simply put, there are things that can be just too heavy, amen, to carry. Yeah. We can be thankful, though, because there are promises in the Word of God that helps us. Amen. Matthew 11 and 28 through 30 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me. For I am meek and lonely in heart. And ye shall find. There it is again. Rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Amen. I think we would all agree that. To the way to find freedom from our burdens. Is through. Jesus Christ. I think we would all agree, amen, on that. I, I, that really, it does sound like, amen, a no-brainer, right? Yeah. Amen. Uh, uh, but, but dealing with people who are creatures of habit, it's easier said than done. Isn't that right? Amen. Praise God. We will find freedom. We will find rest and peace. When we learn to put the word of God to the test. Amen. We find ourselves here in the story of betrayal. This, this story is the result, amen, of a uh, bad decision actually on David's part. Amen. But nonetheless, we are wrapped right here in this story in a mess. Amen. One seed of sin will produce a crop of mess that can take generations sometimes to fix. Amen? But I mean, know that God can take care of it just like that. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Uh, I think we can all say that there are some folks in our families here today uh, that are messy. Amen. Come on, sir. Right? Amen. Uh, we can look down upon that and we can come to the realization that the reason why that they are messy uh, and, and don't forget as such were some of you some of you yeah he gonna help me amen but the reason why they were messy is because of sin yeah period amen and we're thankful because we the Lord found us and uh, helped us and we responded. They just hadn't responded yet. Amen. So thank God, though, Jesus came to take care of the sin problem. The Bible says, for well, we're sin abounds, right? Uh -huh. There's much more grace. So we will see that grace becomes more accessible. Amen. I hope this is all right here this morning. Nevertheless, though, even though we have messy people in our family, they are still yeah. our families. That right? right? My aunt used to tell me, blood is thicker than mud. Uh -huh. That's right. Amen. Blood bound us together. One of the things 
amen, we can't do, uh, uh, well, maybe you can't do, is talk about my family. Well, that's right. That's right, preacher. Right. Huh? You go ahead. Keep uh, real. Can't fight with my family. Oh. Only I can. <laughs> I think I'll help you hear this one. <laughs> Amen. Me and my brothers had some knockdown, uh, drag out fights, man. I'm telling you. Uh, we drew blood, but we never killed each other. The only killing we did with one another is with our mouths. Help us, Lord. Amnon was half brother to Absalom and Tamar. Amnon ended up raping his own sister. That's right. That's right. And uh, as the story goes, David did, he was mad, but he didn't do anything about it. Anything about it. Amen. And uh, Absalom said, you know what? I'm going to take matters into my own hands. Right. I'm going to kind of do a little bit of what my daddy did to uh, Bathsheba's husband. Not Bathsheba. Uh, That's right. Is that right? That's correct. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, what was his name? Uriah? Uriah. Uriah. What did he do to him? He got him drunk. And then he then he killed him. That's the same thing Absalom did to his brother. Mm -hmm. He got him drunk. And then he killed him. Then he killed him. Amen. And, uh, and, and this put Absalom in exile for, amen, at least three years. Come on. He came back. Come on. He came back. Uh, uh, because David still had a heart for his son. Amen. And he came back, and for another two years, David and Absalom did not talk. Amen. Or see each other face to face. Amen. And uh, sooner or later, Absalom and David began to connect. But pretty soon, amen, what Absalom did, amen, was he would get up early in the morning, and he would get to the gate. And uh, anybody that had a problem with the king, Absalom would stand outside the gate, and he would he would deal with the matter, amen. And 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 kind of, he, here's what he would say: He would say something like, uh, uh, "Come on, you know he don't like you, but I can help you." Well, that's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. He began to win the people over, amen. And uh, uh, instead of trying to help the people and strengthen the hand of the king, he used that moment to manipulate the people and to establish himself. He wanted to be the king. Now, we have a couple of problems here. Number one, it wasn't absent, it wasn't the will of God for Absalom to be the king at that moment. Praise God. Number two, how can you betray a man? That is the reason why you are here. That's good. Praise God. Or, amen, David loved Absalom, but yet, amen, he not only tried to take the kingdom from him, he wanted to kill his own father. Sure. Praise God. Amen. Has anybody ever betrayed you? Has, has anybody been betrayed by someone you invested in? Yeah. Amen. Have you ever been betrayed by someone you trusted? How many, how many of you uh, feel like that felt real good? Didn't feel good at all, did it? Man, it hurts to be betrayed by someone who you thought loved you. What makes it even more difficult is when you see not only, amen, uh, how you've been betrayed, praise God, but, but the fact that, that there are folks that not only betray you, but actually seek to kill you. Praise God. Amen. And, and, and sometimes, of course, it may be a little bit different uh, than today than it was then. Uh, uh, sometimes people will try to take your name and run it all through the mud. Yeah. Amen. Destroy your character. Destroy who you are. Because if they can't get your work ethic, then they'll try to tear down your character. Yeah. Amen. And, and, and people are that way. And human nature, is this all right to be done here in a bit, but uh, human nature uh, uh, seems to always want to do what? Just fight back. That's human nature. 
take vengeance into our own hands. Praise God. What I think hurts worse is to become prey. And you know that you actually have been a godly person. Praise God. David was a five-star general. He understood the value of sending in a skilled spy to help keep him in tune to what the enemy was doing. Yeah. Amen. But it wasn't enough just to be, amen, to have a good offensive strategy. But the reality is good offense comes by understanding how to be opposing team plans to attack. Y'all help me here this morning. I don't believe that David was just operating on his own military experience, but he learned the strategy of the supernatural. Amen. We do not need just to lean on our own intellect, but we must couple that with much prayer. Praise God. Amen. The truth is that, amen, it's not either or, intellect or prayer. It's both. Amen. Oftentimes we try to throw one or the other out. Praise God. God gave us a brain and we need to use it, but we must learn to lean, somebody say, on the wisdom of God. Amen. That doesn't eliminate the military tactics that this man David had learned. But we know without doubt that David needed the help of God. Amen. I can't sing, but the song uh, that often comes to me is, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Anybody feel that way here today? Amen. I need the Lord. Amen. Not only uh, was David uh, betrayed by Absalom, Ahithophel also betrayed David. Amen. Ahithophel was David's counselor as well. Amen. And uh, because the counsel of Ahithophel was as if a man inquired at the oracles of God. Ahithophel, amen, didn't miss. Amen. In other words, he was always right. And if God didn't intervene, there would have been some unnecessary casualties. Praise God. And Hithophel was right on target in his counsel to Absalom. Amen. Which would have took care of his daddy. Well, David was a skilled uh, warrior. He probably would have survived. Amen. But we cannot stress enough the importance of each and every one of us learning how to be tactical in our approach to trials and tests that come our way. Amen. Um, uh, one thing I think we need to do is remember the things that you did right in the previous battles that proved to be successful. That's right. Amen. Remember the things that you did right, amen, in the previous battles that proved to be successful. Amen. It's all right to repeat those things. Learn your enemy. Praise God. Somebody say, don't be hasty in your spirit. Don't be hasty in your spirit. Amen. And don't give, don't, don't give time uh, sometimes we don't give time, amen, enough time to think, think things through, amen, each and every situation before you actually make a move. Sometimes people become very reactionary, amen, instead of becoming very proactive. Praise God. Amen. Sometimes we need to take time to think about some things and figure out how we're going to move forward coupled with prayer. Is that all right? Right. Amen. Praise God. Now, I understand that we are all different here. Some of you here today, you think really quick. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and, 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 and sometimes you're very accurate in your thought process. But some of us here today are crockpot thinkers. Praise God. Man, we, we go home and we sit down and we think about it for just a little while. Amen. Before we make any any moves, praise God. Amen. Because I, 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 I do. I want to be very calculated in my response. I, anybody here feel the same way? I don't want to make a sudden move that's going to hurt me. Yeah. I've done that before. Praise God. See, I learned. 
Not only do you learn from your past uh, situations that was good, you also got to learn from the mistakes that you made in the battles that you had, amen, previous, amen. God helps us out in a tremendous way, praise the Lord, amen. And so some of us think a little different, amen. And I believe this is important because not only are we dealing with trials that can be burdensome, but your enemy is fighting very strategically, amen, to do what? To take you down. Yeah. Praise God. And so one thing you and I need to know about our enemy is, is he's not fighting with fire. He's fighting with fear. Mm. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Please hear me this morning. The right counsel at the right time can save you from a whole lot of unnecessary casualties. All because you have learned. Amen. Some things. Anybody learn some things by learning to listen and wait on the Lord. I mean, you know, the counsel of Hushia helped David out. It gave him a warning. Amen. It stayed the enemy. And David was able to escape. Praise God. But it came because David knew, amen, that somebody needed to be in the, in the palace with his son to help him out. But that wasn't just all David. David had learned to lean upon the Lord and to allow God, amen, the opportunity to use whatever tools he had. Praise God. And in every one of our situations, and in every one of our trials, and in every one of our struggles, amen, we have to learn how, praise God, to allow God to use us and help us make it through the difficulties. Praise God. Amen. Sometimes you can move. Amen. Uh, I guess in the, in the boxing arena, I think I've heard him say it, but you learn how to stick and move, right? You learn how to punch and duck. You learn how to throw the jab and duck. You learn how to throw the jab and a right. Amen. Give a one, two, praise God, and duck. And what God is doing is he's teaching us how to stick and move. Praise God. Amen. Because you've been through many situations where, amen, that devil threw an uppercut and got you. You hit the ground and you was down for the count. Praise God. Amen. Oh, God help me. Am I doing all right here this morning? Amen. And so David had good counsel in his corner. David had some help from the Lord that caused him, amen, to move and to prepare for battle. Yeah. Praise God. Now, you know why David and his men escaped? Because David knew that the battle, somebody say it, was the Lord's. He knew how to allow God to work on his behalf. You and I have to be sensitive to the voice of God. Amen? Got to be sensitive to the voice of God. Spending time in prayer, the word of God, being committed and being faithful to the house of God and other spiritual disciplines like fasting, etc., helps to prepare for the battles, for the spiritual battles ahead and empowers us to go on the offensive against Satan and his minions. Amen? Amen. And from my own experience, there have been times when I felt like uh, the weight uh, was too heavy. Anybody ever felt like that? Yeah. No? Okay. I, I, I have had financial struggles, family struggles, uh, uh, people struggles, and it felt like I was about to blow my back out. Well, because of because of the pressure. Amen. One thing prayer helped me do was learn how to be real honest with God in the struggle. Amen. Uh, it, it 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 taught me to be real honest with God. Amen. God help me. There often have been people, and I miss Lord Jesus. I know they don't like me. Y'all ain't gonna help me. And sometimes I feel some type of way too, God. Well, go ahead. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But but when you honest with God through prayer, it really does help you to get some relief. Amen. Praise God. 
just talking to someone who you know cares and loves you. Amen. And you truly can trust because he never done anything to bring any of his faithfulness under question, have you? Amen. It, it, it helps to bring, amen, relief. Praise God. Amen. And can I tell you, amen, also, not only is prayer important, amen, being connected to the saints of God in fellowship is important. Praise God. Uh, you've heard people say, uh, uh, I don't need to go to church. That's just the building. The church is, the, the people is the church. Praise God. Those folks to me, are mavericks, renegades, amen, who don't want to do, who want to do their own thing, amen. The scripture is clear here. Hebrews 10, 24, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much more as you see the day approaching. Praise God. How many of you thank God for the body? Amen. Prayer is important. This is practical. But when you come to church, it is a blessing to come to church and to hear an encouraging word from a brother or a sister. You know what that does? That helps to lift the burdens that you are carrying. Praise God. Amen. Be be before I try to do everything on my own. Praise God. Amen. You know, I, I, I had stuff that felt like this pew here. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and you know what I try to do oftentimes is I would try to lift this pew all by myself. In fact, I would bring the pew to the church house. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the reality is, amen, uh, if I had the wrong spirit and the wrong attitude and didn't want to talk to nobody in the house of God, guess what I did with that pew? You took it back home. I took that pew right back home. Praise God. Amen. It didn't get no help. didn't get no relief. God set up this church body. Can I get, come here, come here. All you men right there. All you, all you, all three of y'all. Come on, help me out real quick. Praise God. Amen. God set up this church body. Amen. Thank God this thing. I need somebody right there on the end. Yeah, you good. I need you to get right here. Yeah, you good. Come here, come here, come here. Run around here. Amen. Hallelujah. I hope y'all strong. <laughs> Got to be careful who you go to as well. Because you want to go to somebody in the church house. Amen. That's strong. Amen. Come on, I need one more help. That's fine. Are you going to help me? Hallelujah. Amen. You got to gotta get with somebody that's strong to help you carry. Amen. Your burdens. If this such, if we have more people to say, that's too heavy. Amen. I need to get over there and help you out. Amen. You see them struggling. You see them going through it. You see them having difficult issues. Come on. God set up this church body. Look at them. Amen. So we can help each other to lift the burdens that we are carrying. Praise God. You, oh, help me, Lord. You don't have to stress and go through this. Let's put it down. All by yourself. Look how easy that was. Amen. When I just got a couple of brothers to come on by. Amen. And help me out. Wasn't that a whole lot easier? It's a whole lot easier for us to work together and to help one another out. Amen. Come on. Reach over and say, would you help me in my struggle? Come on, Brother Bates, I don't want to do this thing all by myself. I need a little bit of help, amen, from the brothers. Hallelujah. I need a little bit of help, Sister LaWanda. Amen. If you see my hands down and me struggling and my head down, just say, Brother, it's going. I wish I had a little help. God set the church body up to help us out, amen, that we can work together in the kingdom. Because you don't have to carry your burdens, Brother Cecil, all by yourself. Somebody shout and thank God for the church. That's why we need to come to church. That's why we need to be in the house of God. Because the Lord helps us, amen, through that. So you shouldn't miss church. Right. Lord. Amen. Can I tell you, betrayal can be difficult to bear. Period. Right. Amen. I, I don't care if it comes from a friend or an acquaintance. It can be tough. But if it comes from a family member, 
especially your child or a parent, it is a different story. Praise God. David still loved his son in spite of his betrayal. He didn't want them to kill him, but they did. Where do you go when you are faced with a heavy burden? David knew his hope and strength was found in the Lord. Yeah. Amen. And we have to keep it real here today. Not everybody here is on the same level. Right. That's the truth. Sometimes we struggle with some situations and some things. Yeah, that's right. Right. Praise God. Amen. amen. When I was a baby starting out, amen, I heard the same sermons you heard. Yeah. 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 But I still struggle. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Praise God. Yeah, God can help me. Yes. Yeah, God can fix me. Oh, yeah, I got to help me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I don't need to worry about it, right? I, I, when I got into this thing, amen, y'all ain't going to help me. I was still pooping my diaper. Yeah. 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 That's right. Y'all ain't going to help me here today. It's all right. But but as I begin to grow, right. right, and begin to mature, I started to understand where to take the stuff in my diaper. Y'all gonna help me hear that? Yeah. 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 As we grew up in God, we not only learned where to take the stuff we are burdened with to the Lord. But we start to see why it is important. Yeah. Amen. Because it gives us relief. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It brings help to us. Praise God. David's son, Absalom, was out of control. Yes, he was. He was out of control. Yes, he, yes. And he rebelled against his father, yet his daddy loved him. Amen. And planned, actually, David planned to help him. David's plan was to show mercy to him. Amen. But Absalom's actions brought judgment upon himself. Amen. Please hear me today. There are some circumstances in life that you and I cannot control. But we can control our response to it. Amen. Here's a saying that, that is actually in this Sunday school lesson that I thought was really good. When something goes wrong, don't go with it. That's right. Amen. When something goes wrong, don't go with it. Do as the apostle did. Learn how to be content. Learn how to handle the ups and the downs of life. Amen. Uh, sometimes it can be hard to get off the roller coaster of emotion. But ask God to help us. Amen. In this particular situation, I'm coming to a close. Amen. Uh, Psalms 55, uh, according to most scholars, believe this was written as a result of David's son, Absalom. Mm -hmm. There are some that uh, think that it was because of King Saul, but nonetheless, David was stressed. Listen to this five-star general. Listen to it. Give ear to my prayer. O oh God, hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint. This five-star general complaint. And make a noise because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked. For they cast iniquity upon me and in wrath. These people hate me. You ever found folks that hate you? That's right, for no reason. Have you ever found somebody that hates you for absolutely no reason? Amen. I, they hate me. I've actually prayed that, Lord, I don't know what's wrong with them. I, I, I don't know what I've done to them. I, I don't understand why they don't like me. I, I've actually prayed that they, they, they hate me. It seems like they hate me. Now you also got to be uh, careful because your emotions can talk to you some stuff that you don't need to listen to. All right, preacher. That's true. All right, preacher. Listen to what he said in verse 4. 
My heart is sore painted within me, and the terrors of death are falling upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me. He dealt with fear, folks. David, the five-star general, had problems sometimes with fear and horror had overwhelmed him. Verse 6, he said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. How many of you said, I I'm just getting out of here. You know what? I'm just going to run away from this thing. I wish I had some wings to run away and to get away from here. Praise God. Oh, if I had wings and I could just escape this. Praise God. Amen. If I could get away. But the Lord didn't let you get away, did he? Thank God. He said, Lo, then would I wander far off and remain in the wilderness. And the word there, Selah, is there. You know what? He took a pause to think about it. Anybody ever felt like this? David is in his feelings. In prayer. And you know what he's not weak? He's not weak because he feels like this. He's still a five star general who has real feelings. I have come to this understanding in my walk with God. There are times it's okay not to be okay. Amen. It is. I now I, I know fear and faith can't coexist, but you can have courage to look your fears in the face mm -hmm. and trust that some way, somehow, God is going to work it out. Yeah. Listen, listen to David's lament in verse 12 of 55 uh, of chapter 55. For it was not an enemy that reproached me, and I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me, that did magnify himself against me, then I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou a man my equal, my guide, a man and my acquaintance. Look, we took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God in company. His, his pain was the result of him having a close relationship with someone in the church yeah. that betrayed him. Go ahead and teach, preacher. But you know what David didn't do? He didn't change churches. Go ahead, preacher. Go ahead. Amen. Woo. He didn't tear down. He didn't tear down the person that hurt him. Uh -huh. He was mature enough uh -huh. that he knew where to take his stuff. And he knew why that was important. Praise God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes we can tear each other down, hurt each other, cause people to run out of the house of God, and it'd be a, a, a brother offended. It's, it's hard sometimes to win. Praise God. Come on. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God got to help us to know where to take our stuff to. Praise God. And, and learn to. God, I, I don't know why this is going on, but can you help my brother? Anybody ever pray for your brother, your sister, that it seems as if they're tearing you down, but you're trying to help them? You want them to be saved genuinely. Anybody ever felt like that? I'm going to get you. God, destroy them. Make them feel what I'm feeling. Listen, Psalm 16, Psalm 55, 16, as for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Yes. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry loud. He shall hear my voice. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many with me. Listen, this is the verse we started with. Cast thy burdens upon the Lord. And he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. He did not end his prayer with defeat. Because he had confidence in the one that is our burden bearer. Right. Amen. God will bear your burdens. 
if you bring, I don't know if I'm making sense here this morning, but if you bring them to him, God will bear your burdens. Listen, right. listen to this scripture. There is there's something called biblical humility. Yeah. Yes, sir. Right? Uh -huh. The scripture gives us a clear definition of biblical humility. Amen. So, uh, 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7. Humble yourselves. Yeah. Therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Yeah. If you look at that verse of scripture in the text, it has a semicolon there. That means that sentence is not finished. That means there's more coming after it. Praise God. In fact, the explanation of how to humble ourselves is coming after what? After that. Is that correct? Uh -huh. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. How? Casting all your cares upon him, for he cared for you. Yes. Biblical humility is coming to the place where we learn to cast our cares upon the Lord. Instead of taking it into our own hands. On, Would you say amen to that? Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. If you study the life of David, he could have lost his mind. Yeah. From some of the things he had told me. But where David drew his strength from, he saw that some of the things he went through, God gave him victory. It's amazing that uh, a lot of times that you're dealing with something and it seems like uh, you can't really manage it. Go back and look at something that God had already yeah. And you can say, well, God, help me out of this situation. God's going to help me out of this situation. This is what David could draw his strength from. How God actually helped him, amen, when he was going through something before. One of, one of the verses in the scripture that is powerful, and it's in Romans 8 31, it says, What shall we? Then say to these things. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Uh -huh. These things. These things. And God be for us. Yeah. Who can be against us? Uh, well. Remember these things. I talked to a preacher uh, this morning in North Carolina. He had, him and his wife had went through so much. Amen. I'm talking about physical struggles. But guess what? He still stands. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. He hasn't gave up. He hasn't threw the talent. You know why? He has he had answered some experience in the past where God has helped him in various different situations. Guess what he's doing right now? cast his head upon the Lord. Amen. And the Lord is holding him up. Praise God. Amen. And that's it. You know, a lot of times I, I was, um, um, my grandson had an issue and I, and I got to think about it, I got to pray. And I said, Lord, you took care of my, my son. You can take care of my grandson. That's right. That's true. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hello. That's how I got rid of my bird. Right. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and sometimes in our walk with God, we got to go back and reach in our past how the Lord has helped us to overcome difficulties. Praise God. And um, I don't care if your cares is small. Give it to the Lord. Practice giving your cares to the Lord. 
And, and the scripture talks about whatever, whatever our cares is, God is still concerned and concerned about it. Praise God. And it may be a random situation that you're dealing with. God cares about that situation. Uh, a physical issue in your body, God cares about that too. Praise God. The key to the actually really living for God when you're going through a storm is remember that God is for us. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Uh,